Shalom, everyone. I am Dr. Renee, the Assistant Pastor of Empowerment of Faith, Kingdom Center for Ambassadors. We definitely want to greet you and say thank you so much for joining us, whether you're joining us by way of social media or on our telecast. We definitely want to ask you to like, subscribe, and share this message whenever you get a chance. In fact, you can do that right now. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about uprooting strongholds. And it's very important as a kingdom ambassador that we understand the importance of doing this and exactly what strongholds are. So let's get right into what the Father wants to reveal to us today. So when we're dealing with this word stronghold, first we want to talk to you about this particular scripture. This scripture here is in Corinthians 10. The scripture reads, for although we are living in the flesh, we do not wage war again according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not merely human, but powerful to Elohim for the tearing down of fortresses, tearing down of arguments, and all pride that is raised up against the knowledge of Elohim and taking every thought captive to the obedience of the Messiah. And we are ready to punish all disobedience whenever your obedience is completed. This is so important. Okay, so some people will use this particular scripture to say that we are in spiritual war warfare. Well, our spiritual warfare is to be done by the malachams. The angels are the one who are battling on our behalf, warring in the spiritual realm. But there are things that we should do as a kingdom ambassador. Number one, the scripture tells us here that we are to tear down all fortresses, tearing down arguments all pride that's raised up against the knowledge of Elohim. This is key. Anything that exalts itself above the word of Elohim, that has to be torn down. So this brings us to dealing with the strongholds that are in our minds. So when we're dealing with this word stronghold, exactly what is it? So we know that a stronghold is, is uh, as a matter of fact, strongholds are thoughts that hold us strongly. It's quite simple. But according to that scripture that we just read, when we take it even further, those strongholds have decided to embed in the mind of a believer. Why? Because the believer has chosen not to allow the word to dominate in his or her mind, but allow that stronghold, whatever that thought is, to be fastened in their mind instead. Okay, so what are strongholds? Thoughts that hold you strongly. And so in some cases, we're actually dealing with a demon that is sitting on the throne of a heart of a believer. Now, we don't want to talk like that, but that's exactly what it is, because if when the word of Elohim comes forth, we have a responsibility as a kingdom ambassador to obey that word. If we continually disobey that word, we are what we call a criminal. We're not uh, abiding by the laws of the kingdom. As a matter of fact, a stronghold is there sitting on the heart of that believer and that stronghold has taken precedent and it's number one instead of the word being number one in that person's heart, okay? And then also strongholds can be a blockage or a full blockage to access to something. And so we're gonna take a deeper look at that. When we're looking at the Hebrew word for strong stronghold, we have the word mitzvah, and it is comprised of mem, bayet, sadi, and resh. So as you know, a, a great or a large percentage of the Hebrew words is combined or comprised with root words. So we see a root word in here, which is besar, and that means to make inaccessible. 
So let's take a deeper look at this. So Mem, we know that Mem, for those who've been following us, we know that Mem, it means anointing, but we also know that Mem can be chaotic or means chaos when it's out of its boundaries. And then we have the next reading from right to left. Hebrew is reading from right to left. We have the next Hebrew, Olivet, but yet, which means what's inside or what's in the mind or what's in the heart of the person. And then we have the next Hebrew, Olivet, which was Saudi. Saudi, it means to have a strong desire or a strong pull towards something. And then we have the last Hebrew olive bet here, which is resh. And resh is dealing with the mind of a person or a ruler or a high prince. But in this text here, it's actually dealing with the mind of a person. So when we're looking at this word stronghold, it is to have a strong desire or a strong pull that causes chaos in the mind of a person. And so when we were looking at the root word, which is basar, it means to make inaccessible. This stronghold has made what inaccessible? It has made the word of Elohim inaccessible in your heart, in your mind. Why? Because that stronghold is on the throne or in the heart of the believer and it is taking the, uh, the first place or the first seat versus having the word of Elohim being number one. So when we're dealing with strongholds, this spirit, it can no longer be taken for granted. This spirit is treacherous. This spirit is detrimental to your spiritual health. So as a kingdom ambassador, we must take a closer look at it and allow the Holy Spirit to uproot the stronghold that is taking precedent in our hearts. This is very important. Many times we take it for granted and think, oh, well, you know, it's okay. But no, it tells us that as a kingdom ambassador, we are to cast down imaginations, anything that exalt itself above the word of Elohim. That's what we are to do as a kingdom ambassador. So as we take it further, strongholds, um, there are three, three things that we want to deal with. Strongholds are fastened to the mind of believer. How? Why? How did this happen? Well, number one, when a conceived thought, when it goes against the scripture and this person has accepted this thought, then it gives birth to sin. We have to make sure that we're not allowing this to happen. When it goes against the scripture and this believer has contaminated, has accepted this contaminated thought and perceived it as being true, then this is how the stronghold fastens to the mind of the believer. So let's look at this in Jacob 1 and 12. The word Elohim breathes, it says, blessed is the man who does endure trial. For when he has been proved, he shall receive the crown of life, which the master has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is enticed, I am enticed by Elohim, for Elohim is not enticed by evil matters, and he entices no one. But each one is enticed when he is drawn away by his own desires and trapped. See, there's the stronghold right there. And then when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when it has been accomplished, brings forth death. Do not go astray, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow or of turning. So this is important. As a kingdom ambassador, I need to make sure that when this spirit entices me, 
first of all, I need to make sure that I know that it's not Elohim who is enticing me. It's that thing that's on the inside of me that's drawing me. We just talked about that. That's pulling me, that desire that's on the inside of me that is drawing me and enticing me and causing me or luring me to be trapped. So before I am trapped by the spirit, then I, by this spirit that goes against the spirit of Elohim, I have to make a conscious decision. No, I'm not doing this. No, this is wrong. See, this is where, this is one of the ways the enemy traps the believer making him think or her think that what they're doing is acceptable when the word of Elohim has already gone forth in this matter. Did you know as the kingdom ambassador that your vote does not count? Your vote does not count as a kingdom ambassador because the king has already spoken. It has already been written. His word is law and it cannot be changed. So, so why even wrestle with it? So we have to keep that in mind. Like, okay, wait a minute. What does the word say about this? Well, if the word says this about this matter, then let it be said, let it be done and let it be written. And so it is. All right. So, so when we're dealing with the stronghold, we see that a believer is enticed by those things that's tempting him, tempting her. But according to the word of Elohim, it tells us that there is no temptation that has ceased us. What is, uh, what is common to man, but Elohim will provide a way of escape so that we can stand up under it. So my job is to have that desire, the, the same things that he want me to desire, make sure that I'm craving those things, that my will is lined up with his will, that the things that I crave deep down inside, that I want to be pleasing in his sight. I want to be drawn to him versus drawn to the things that my flesh wants. So when that temptation come, I'm able to stand up under it and bear it. All right, so let's look at this. Here's another uh, reason why strongholds are fastened to the mind. Here's another reason. Well, number two, the person may not even be born again. If the person is not born again, then... There's a stronghold there. What I, uh, Memphis is wow. Memphis is something else. Um, I know I know different cities that have different things that they're dealing with, but one stronghold in Memphis that is fastened here is the stronghold of religion, having a form, looking a certain way having the appearance appearance of something, but no power. Okay, so first of all, the question is, am I saved or not? Is it enough for me to just confess that Yeshua is Lord and I just continually live my life just like I want to and I show up when I want to, do what I want to do, make up my own rules? That's the spirit of religion. As a matter of fact, that person, it couldn't be, could not be born again. Okay, so let's look at Corinthians Olive 1 and 18. Uh, for the word of the covenant is foolishness to those who are dying. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of Elohim. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise I will bring the discernment of the discerning to nothing. In other words, all of my research, if I'm not born again, all of that, all of the, the human reasoning, the ability of me thinking apart from what has already been established, all of that is, is not as foolishness to, to Elohim. As a matter of fact, this is exactly 
what Adam and his wife, Masa Isa Niger did, Niger did in um, the garden. This is what they did. They chose to think apart from what was already established. That's how dangerous religion is. And we'll get into that in just a minute. All right, verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Hasn't Elohim made foolishness foolish the wisdom of this world? For seeing that in the wisdom of Elohim, the world through his wisdom didn't know Elohim. It was Elohim's good pleasure through the foolishness of proclaiming to save those who believe. For the Yehudites ask for signs, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we proclaim Messiah crucified, which is a stumbling block to the Yehudites and foolishness to Greeks. But to those who are called, both the Yehudites and Greeks, the Messiah is the power of Elohim and the wisdom of Elohim, because the foolishness of Elohim is wiser than men. And the weakness of Elohim is stronger than men. Man, that's powerful right there. In all of my wisdom, in all of everything that I, that I know, in all of my research, in all of, uh, all of my unctions, in all of my energies, because the word energy, that's popular right now. What's your vibe? What's your energy? Wait a minute. We're, we're, not, we're not conformed to this world. We're not conformed to this world. We're supposed to be transformed by the renewing of the mind of Elohim. So if I'm going to be transformed by this, wor uh, this word, then it's my responsibility to find out, well, what does the word say? So if I'm not even saved, I don't even know what to research. I don't even know what... Um, my foundational basis should be. I don't even know what the absolute truth is. The sons of Elohim are led by the spirit of Elohim. I can't be led by the spirit of Elohim if I'm not even his son. Oh my goodness. So, all right. So these strongholds are sitting up here because number one, this person is not even saved. They may think they're saved, but if a person is doing what they want to do, when they want to do, that, that person's not even saved. Because when you give your life to the Messiah, you relinquish your rights. You give up the way that you think and exchange his ideas for your ideas. You exchange your way of doing things and do it his way. As a matter of fact, when you're seeking truth, truth will search for you. Truth, wisdom cries out. That, that's never the problem. Wisdom is always crying out, but will I hear when wisdom is crying out or is there a, a blockage because of the stronghold that's fastened in my mind? I'm thinking that I'm doing the right thing, but I'm totally off. I'm not even, the father's like, okay, you all the way down there. I'm right here. No man can come into the father unless they go through the sun and unless the Holy Spirit draws this person. All right, so here's another reason. There are several reasons, but I'm just giving you three reasons that strongholds are fastened to the mind. Refusing to love the truth. Refusing to love the truth. Let's look at Thessalonium, uh, but yet... Here it is in verse nine. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and wonders of falsehood and with all deceit of unrighteousness and those perishing, perishing because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be saved. And this reason Elohim sends them a working of delusion for them to believe the falsehood in order that all should be judged who did not believe the truth, but have delighted in the unrighteousness. So the word of Elohim tells me here that because this person refused to love the truth, 
The word is truth. This is the, my word is truth. Okay. The word is truth. The next question is, well, I do love the truth. Well, what's love? Love is to reveal the heart of the father. So many people have a problem with, um, understanding this revelation well what is the heart of the father the heart of the father is that as a man as a man or a woman that i'm to cultivate the earth with the precepts of heaven so heaven is not going to violate itself the word of elohim has already been established so if i'm saying that i'm a kingdom ambassador that I love Elohim with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, then I should make sure that I'm aligning myself up with what I already said that I was going to do. If I say that I love him, then I have a corresponding action by the things that I'm doing. So what am I to do? I'm not only to live and speak what the word is saying, but I also, I'm to show others the same thing. I'm supposed to show them the way. So it says here, um, it says in verse 10, and with all the seed of unrighteousness and those perishing because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be saved. We were just talking about that. Well, some people, they're not even saved because they would rather love the lie. Rather continue on in the way that they're going and thinking that, heaven is going to agree with their lifestyle. We're never to think that heaven is going to conform to us. We're always to conform to the ways that has already been established in heaven. Let it be said, let it be written, and let it be done. Okay, so in verse 11, and for this reason, Elohim sends them a working of delusion. Another translation said, sends them a strong delusion for them to believe the falsehood, falsehood. Since you don't love the truth, since you have decided to embrace the lie and say things like, well, Elohim understands. Well, he knows my heart. Well, he's still working on me. That stronghold, stronghold, that stronghold will stay right there. And we have to be really careful because if a person continually walk in the spirit of re rebellion and remain a criminal, according to the word, then eventually their heart is going to become hardened. And then there's, there's no hope. There is no hope. And then it goes on and says in verse 12, in order that all should be judged who did not believe the truth, but have delighted in, in unrighteousness. And Romeo, it talks about not only do the person delight in unrighteousness, but they approve of those who are doing it as well. In other words, they're pushing the agenda of the enemy and they're saying it's okay. No, ma'am. No, sir. All right. And so let's look at this. And uh, also in Luke 22, verse 31. And Yeshua said, Shimeon, Shimeon, see, Satan has asked for you to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your belief should not fail. And when you have turned, strengthen your brothers. Verse 33, and he said to him, Master, I am prepared to go with you both to prison and to death. Man, that sounds real good. He was like, look, I'm your ride or die. I'm here to the very end. And guess what Yeshua told him? He said, bruh, no, you're not. <laughs> Before the rooster even crowed three times, you are going to turn your back on me. Wow. So he had zeal, but not according to knowledge. He had the right thing to say and he was motivated like, no, I'm here to say I'm, 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 I'm about that life. I'm getting ready to do it. This is how we talk. I'm about that life. I'm, I'm going all the way. I'll never turn my back. He said, look, watch this. 
I've already prayed for you. And he told him the answer. <laughs> the answer was in his problem. He told him the answer. He knows the end from the very beginning. He said this, but I have prayed for you that your belief should not fail. And when you have turned, in other words, you're getting ready to turn, bruh. When you have turned, strengthen your brothers. So as a kingdom ambassador, I need to make sure that I deal with that stronghold that's fastened in my mind. I deal with that. And Elohim, I mean, Yeshua, he's already praying for us. He's praying for us. The Holy Spirit is making intercessions on our behalf. And not only has he prayed for us and he is praying for us, when I come out, when I overcome, when I have decided to no longer allow the stronghold to be fastened to my mind, the spirit to deal with me in this way, then I'm to go and strengthen my brothers. See, we we've been doing this thing like, okay, all right, I'm I'm getting ready to I'm getting ready to go do this. I'm getting ready to do that. Wait a minute. Let me deal with me. Let me allow the Holy Spirit to be number one in my life. Shine that light in every area in my life that there are no strongholds, that I am able to move as the Holy Spirit allows me, as the Holy Spirit leads me. As we were uh, leaving um, the ministry one day when we were meeting in person, definitely want to invite you if you are in the uh, Memphis area. I heard something clearly and it was this. Many people are showing up to the congregations day in and day out, but there are strongholds that are there that haven't been dealt with. And those strongholds have to be uprooted. Many people get excited when they hear the word, like, oh man, that was a good word, and leave bound, inaccessible, strongholds still sitting on the throne. Many people are leaving, coming in one way and leaving out the same way. Why? refusing to change. See, this is the power of religion. Religion is so powerful. And, and here's my next note. I was just flowing, but here's my next note. Religion is so powerful. It will have you bound to the point whereas you think you're doing 100 and you're doing zero. <laughs> you're like, oh, I know I'm, I'm, wait, 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 wait a minute. What? is the Holy Spirit saying about that particular situation, that area that the word has not permeated because there's a stronghold sitting there. So this dealing with, uh, there are many strongholds, but dealing with the religious stronghold, this type of person, they have the zeal. We just noted that, but no knowledge. Uh, number two, they can hear the word, but refuse to change. Well, I know, I, the, you know, he's working on me. Wait a minute. It is finished. It is finished. The word has already gone forth. So I need to make sure that I am allowing that word to wash my mind so that I can be changed, renew my mind, change the way that I think, uproot the old way of thinking. All right, number three, can hear the word and will defend what you believe versus what the word has already said. Here's a great example. All right, well, the word says that we are not to, uh, here, there are several examples. The word says that we should not dwell with a person or cohabitate with a person that we are not married to. We shouldn't be living with a person, shacking with them, sleeping with them, having sex with them if we're not married. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Wait a minute. We said that we were believers. So who's on the throne? Is the word on the throne? 
is the word number one or is that stronghold number one? Because anytime the word comes forth and we speak opposite of what the word says, guess what's speaking? That's that stronghold that's speaking. That's that spirit that's trying to rise up like, nope, I'm not leaving today. I'm staying right here. I'm not getting off my throne. I'm going to stay right here. We ain't going nowhere. Wow. So I mentioned earlier how the king's word is law. This is not a democracy. The word has already been settled. I can't just do what I want to do when I want to. Not, not if I'm a, a, a kingdom ambassador who is living to uh, be victorious, an overcoming kingdom ambassador. Because there are many lost kings in the earth. There are many people who are doing their own thing. And the father is saying, come on, come on back, daughter. Come on back, son. Come here. I am still waiting on you to line up with what's already been established. Come on back here. You, you can't be your own pastor. I have a way that's already established. I have a way that's already set up. There's a way that seems right unto man, but in the end, it leads to destruction. All right, so uh, here's the note here. Your vote does not count in heaven. And guess what? It barely count on earth. <laughs> All right, number four, religion is so powerful until it will block you from accepting the truth because of indoctrination. Man, indoctrination is so powerful. Indoctrination is so powerful to the point where as people are still repeating things that the father has not even said, the traditions of men, it makes the word of Elohim of non-effect. People, the indoctrination will cause you to believe a lie and then you'll begin to teach that lie from generation to generation. And because this religious spirit is intertwined with it, that stronghold has to be uprooted by the power and the spirit of Elohim. It has to, there's no way around it. So indoctrination, that's accepting just what's been passed on and you haven't even uh, checked it or anything. I can remember when I was in the fifth grade and um, that's when I first dedicated my life to Yeshua. And I was 100% sincere, sincere about that. And so I began to study and I was looking at some things and I was asking questions because I, I was raised uh, in a Baptist ministry at that particular time. And I was asking some questions that they didn't have any answers to. As a matter of fact, at that particular time, you would go to church, and we know that's a political term, but you would go to church, hear a good message, and then right afterwards, I would hear, I'm like, what? what? Why is the deacon drunk? It's like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And they were like, be quiet, wait a minute, be quiet. What, why, why I got, why, what's going on? Why is this person cursing? I thought, Okay, I I was getting mixed up. Wait a minute. Okay, um, uh, okay. How are we how how are we supposed to be doing this thing? See, indoctrination will make you think that that's okay. Living like you want to live, and then the the father will he'll forgive you, child. He'll forgive you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We can't keep we can't keep doing that. Okay, so let's look at. Let's look at the next note, but I, I am grateful. I'm grateful um, that, you know, I did give my life to the father at a very young age. And guess what? I had to learn to hear his voice for myself. I had to study. I had to seek things out. And when I say for myself, I'm not talking about apart from being under a ministry, no, I'm, you know, with a pastorial's covering, yes, yes. But I had to learn how to search the scriptures, learn his voice, learn to be uh, led by the Holy Spirit, be filled with the Holy Spirit 
things begin to line up and and that's the way of the father that's what he wants for us all right so we were dealing with those religious strongholds now so here are some things that religion taught me god understands uh religion taught me you can't judge me religion taught me well it's it's your body do what, what do what you want to do uh, tithing is under the law the feast days were for the Jews only. Somebody say lie, lie, lie. All of these, man, indoctrination is terrible. All right, um, number six, it's okay to celebrate Yeshua's birth on Christmas because it doesn't matter as long as we celebrate it. What? Who made up that rule? How would you like to have a birthday in October and then somebody say, okay, happy birthday, and it's in June? What? What are we doing? Why is that a pass? Why is that okay? <laughs> it doesn't say it. Yes, it does. You have to study it out. All right, number seven, we are sinners saved by grace. I'll never forget the time when uh, uh, we got a phone call from our school, from our son's school. And they were saying that he was, you know, causing some ruckus at the school. We were like, what? What what happened? I mean, what is it? We don't have no problems out of him. He's pretty obedient. What are you talking about? And uh, they were teaching you you were uh, you were sent a sinner saved by grace. And he was like, you can't be a sinner and a saint at the same time. You got to be one or the other. These things we have been taught, we have to uproot these strongholds of religion. And then the last one, God will never send you to hell. And I said, God on purpose. True, Elohim would never send you to hell. We send ourselves to hell every day when we disobey. <laughs> okay, so religion is so powerful in such a stronghold, it will cause people to be offended at the truth, be offended at the truth. And then it will cause people to want to kill the messenger and will not conform to the spirit of religion. It will, okay, it will cause the people to kill the messenger of the truth because the messenger will not conform to the spirit of religion. Oh man, that's something else. That's how powerful that religious stronghold is. The stronghold of religion will cause a person not to conform to the ways of Elohim and hold fast to how it has always been done. This stronghold has to be dealt with. It has to move. And as a kingdom ambassador, it's your, it's your obligation, it's your responsibility to make sure that you go before the Father, ask the Father, deal with my heart, uproot every stronghold that's unlike you. Deal with it, cut it off, lacerate it, obliterate it, get rid of it. And how do we do that? We make the exchange. Something greater has to come in to uproot what is the lesson. Now that stronghold is nothing to take, take, you know, to play around with because it's there to sit on the heart of the believer so that that believer does not fully operate in his or her potential. So today I want to just ask you, for those who are watching today, I want to ask you, have you thought about the strongholds that's in your life? Have you thought about it? Have you thought about why is it that you get so far and then you end up going back to the beginning of the line because you were one place and then you, it seems like you're getting so far and then, okay, what, what's going on here? There's a stronghold. That stronghold, whatever it is, whether it's a stronghold of religion, a stronghold of music, we'll get into that another time. A, a, there are so many, a stronghold of drugs, a stronghold of sex, whatever that stronghold is, Elohim is greater. 
greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So I have to make sure that the things that are in me, that are li they're lining up with the precepts of Elohim so that Elohim can be greater in my life and that I won't be slapped around by these strongholds. So I hope you were blessed today as I shared this word. And once again, I'm asking that you would like, subscribe, and share. And for those who are watching, we definitely thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your prayers. And we say shalom to you. And also we say shalom, y'all.